capped it to 10,000. His handlers contend that it's going to cost him 30,000 just to fight here. But that's how much he wants the title. And so he's fighting for what some people would consider, Murray, a very paltry $10,000 tonight. Well, everybody knows in the fight game, you don't make any money fighting for a title. You make money for something like that. Belt, huh? You've got to have it. See, that's what they call the marketable commodity. Under two minutes to go in the seventh round. Marvin Johnson, Jean Marie Amibi. And if they say that styles make the match and it has any validity whatsoever, we, we couldn't ask for anything better here. No, I was so pleased when I got the chance to come here and do this because Marvin Johnson has been one of my favorite light heavyweight champions ever since I started boxing and I have some personal interest because I fought and beat Amibi and I knew both the styles would come together and make for one terrific fight and it has. Midway through the seventh round Amibi misses with a wild overhand right. Amibi has as Murray mentioned changed his his fight plan deviated a little bit as his fight has progressed, but he has still pretty much been there for Marvin Johnson. He has been pretty much right in front of him. He is catching Johnson now with some very telling punches, Sam. Johnson is slowing down a little bit, and he may not be catching him with a lot of them, but he is catching him with some very powerful punches. And again, we alert all of our local stations uh, we'll be taking a break. At the end of this, the seventh round. They are in Amibi's corner here, and Amibi trying to fight his way out of it. Trying to turn Marvin around, slaps him with the right hand. Under 30 seconds to go in the round. And Luis Rivera warns holding and hitting. He had his glove cupped around the back of Johnson's head, and he was trying to catch him with the uppercut, which is a foul. We'll return after this word from your local station with round number eight, scheduled for 15. Back live in the Market Square Arena, Jean-Marie Amibi, through a translator, was told by his uh, handler uh, that he's got to start fighting with both hands, Murray. Yeah, he's tending to hold on with one hand while punching with the other one. And Victor Valley, his head cornerman, is telling him, you've got to punch with two hands, not one hand. Don't hold on with one hand. So round number eight now, Amibi in the blue trunks and Marvin Johnson in the white trunks. What is a fighter going through mentally at this point after he has delivered and taken such incredible shots? Johnson with a barrage of five or six in a row. They both look obviously fatigued, Murray. I know you've been in that position before. That was a clash of heads. Amibi has suffered a tremendous gash over his left eye. He sure has. Very bad cut. Well, they've been rolling their heads around there, and finally he got butted by Marvin Johnson. He's complaining about it. Plus, one of the other factors is both of them are clean-shaven. There's no hair in there to muffle the blow. Under two minutes to go on the eighth round. Amibi is trying now to butt Johnson. When you see in close, you'll see his head shoot across. And he is purposely trying to butt him. Well, it is Amibi who got butted and who has suffered the gash now over his left eye. And that could be very damaging as this fight goes on. Very damaging, but only halfway through the fight as such, and he has got a very bad cut over that eye. It's in the position where the doctor would recommend the, the referee to stop it because the blood goes into the eye and obscures his vision. This crowd is almost pandemonious. They can almost sense that Marvin, perhaps, if he could take advantage of that opportunity, at one minute mark now, the eighth round, one minute to go, he could do something that he has dreamed about all of his life and never been able to do, and that's to have one successful defense of his light heavyweight championship. Now it's a minute to go. And Marvin's working it pretty good. And maybe still content to work down on the body. Johnson with a double left hook. Johnson with a beautiful left hand. Amibi with an overhand right and then an uppercut that just missed. Boy, they are just toe-to-toe. -to -toe. There is blood now coming from the mouth of Amibi, unless it is the blood that is dripped down from his eye. Oh, Johnson with a great combination. And Amibi standing right there. What a war horse he is. 
Jean Marie Amibi from Cameroon, now fighting out of Paris, and Marvin Johnson like he's fighting for his life. He is literally fighting for his life now. He, his life is resting right in the palms of hands. What an incredible eighth round! Everybody is on their feet. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but we're going to try to go back to the ring. to say because I couldn't hear a word of it it is so deafening here in the Market Square Arena as we uh, hear the bell for round number nine I don't know if you could hear anything Murray I couldn't distinguish one word from the corner no I couldn't uh, hear very much Sam I did observe the corner of Amibi they were working feverishly to try and stop that cut over the eye and in doing so they forgot to put the mouthpiece back in Amibi Amibi is now fighting this round without a mouthpiece uh oh and Johnson just chasing him around the ring now Amibi just spitting out blood. And he does not have a mouthpiece. Marvin Johnson with a good right hand. And Amibi now throws a straight right that just grazes the shoulder of Marvin Johnson. Amibi already has a cut in his lip. I've seen Victor Valley administering some coagulant to the bottom lip of Amibi. And now he's fighting around without a mouthpiece, which can only endanger it more. Not only that, the cut over his left eye is very bad. Well, his cut man is going to be a busy gentleman here should we go any further. Two minutes remaining here in the ninth round. This will be an eternity for Jean Maria Mibi. And already our table here at ringside is splattered with blood. In fact, your lovely tuxedo in my hand, Mr. Sutherland. <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's a price you pay for a great fight, and this has been a great fight. I hope we're not overstating the case. A minute and a half to go in round number nine. Amibi has been hit with everything in the Marvin Johnson arsenal, and conversely, Amibi has leveled some rockets at Johnson, and he stood right there and taken it. What's holding both these guys up right now is the heart of champions and the will to win. That's entirely what is holding those guys up. We alert our local stations in one minute. We'll be taking a break here before round number 10. It'll be coming your way. The Nibi has just been caught with two good right, sorry, left hands. Good punches. Johnson has shown some great stamina in this fight. Of course, he has been conditioned to go 15 many times before. A Nibi wailing away with the right hand. Like a, he uses the right hand almost like a sledgehammer. An extremely strong young man, Jean Maria Mibi, but he is bleeding profusely now from above that left eye. And that's got to cause him some serious trouble. Under 30 seconds to go. Round number nine. Johnson looks pretty much unscathed. Good right hand by Marvin. Johnson just threw, a, threw and landed a beautiful right hook. Now Amibi is starting to be bothered by that blood running in his eye. Every right hand that Johnson throws now is connecting. Stand by for our local stations. We'll return after this message. Sam Nover and Murray Sutherland were ringside at a great, great WBA light heavyweight championship fight. In the blue trunks, it's Jean Marie Amibi from the Cameroon against the champion Marvin Johnson. And you would think that Marvin Johnson has everything to lose. He does, he's fighting more tenaciously perhaps than at any time in his life. He has failed to defend a title twice before that he has held. This is the third time that he is holding the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, and he is trying to successfully defend it for the very first time. 
Amoebe, like a man possessed, wanting to win the title for recognition and the opportunity for some real stardom. Amoebe, ranked number two by the WBA, ranked number one by the WBC. Just an outstanding light heavyweight, but as Murray Sutherland so aptly put it a few rounds ago, you can't make any money unless you got the belt. We're scheduled for 15 rounds. The cut of Amoebe is reopened and is bleeding very, very badly, Sam. I would suspect the referee at any time could step in and have the ringside doctor look at it to advise him whether it should be going, whether it should continue or not. Murray and I both noticed that between the ninth and 10th rounds, one of the handlers from Marvin Johnson uh, called Luis Rivera, the referee, over and was screaming at him. And the guess may be, and I'm only guessing, that maybe he wants somebody to stop the fight and declare his uh, fighter the winner. That's entirely true. I have known corner men of the opposite corner shouting to Rafi, stop it, stop it. Amibi was backing away. Johnson caught him with the left hand, but Amibi was backing out of there, so it lost some of the impact. Amibi just stopped Johnson in his tracks with a beautiful straight right hand. Set him right back on his heels. Johnson just comes bulldogging in there. One minute to go in round number 10. And who would have thought it was going to reach this point? Certainly nobody here in Indianapolis. <laughs> I certainly didn't start. Under 30 seconds to go in the 10th round. Double right hook by Johnson connected on Amoebe. And again, John Amoebe having his vision impaired by the blood that continues to drip from the right eye. And into his mouth, might I add. His lips are red from the blood that continues to drip down his face. And all he does is spit it out of the way and go through. This is round 11. 15 rounder from the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis. Marvin Johnson in the white trunks. 42 and 5, his professional record with 37 knockouts. John Maria Mebe, who now has cuts over both his right and left eye. 26 and 2. Knocked out 20 of his opponents. Been disqualified once and lost to Murray Sutherland, my broadcast partner here tonight, who knocked him out in the ninth round. Amibi has survived the ninth round and the tenth round in this fight for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, but he is in discernible trouble. Murray, there's no question about that. Absolutely, Sam. He has got bad cuts over both eyes. The one over the left eye particularly, very, very white gash. Just sustained a cut over the right eye just at the end of that last, last round. And Dr. Uh, Crutchall, who is the doctor here at ringside, took a good look at Amibi for the very first time after that tenth round, and he allowed him to come out here for round number 11. So while they look like they're dangerous, they are not bad enough to stop the fight. Two minutes to go in the 11th round. Johnson again with a right lead in the left follow. A double right hook. He goes down to the body and then comes up high to the side of the head. Marvin Johnson seemingly gaining a bit of control in the fight, Murray, in the last few rounds. Yes, he's turned the tide around a little bit. He's putting the same kind of pressure on the media as as he's done in all his fights. He is starting now to take control of his fight. Oh, he just caught the Amoebe with a beautiful left hand, followed with a clubbing right hand. And Amoebe, as you'll see him go to the eye with his glove to wipe some of the blood from his eyes. Very muscular young man is John Amoebe. And with that three-inch height advantage, but it certainly uh, it doesn't seem to have been of any aid to him. One minute to go here in the 11th round. Oh, beautiful Good left hook. Again, I alert our local stations of an upcoming break at the end of the 11th round. Right uppercut by Amoebe. Now working on the body of Marvin Johnson right over our microphone. Luis Rivera with a warning now. And what is this? A 
I think they're bringing the ring thing, ring safe position back in yep. to check the cuts on Amidu. Dr. Crutchell is being brought back into the ring. Victor Valley is now working on his fighter, wiping which, off some of the blood. Which is not allowed. He is not allowed to be up there. And the doctor is pulling Valley away. I don't know if you can see it, but right next to Amibi, Victor Valley, the trainer for Jean Marie Amibi, is incensed. And the doctor keeps pushing him away because he's wiping the blood out of the eyes of Jean Marie Amibi. We have 25 seconds left in the round. This is a total. I don't am, total sham it is against all rules for him to be there administering to those cuts. He should have been disqualified the minute he stood on that ring apron. Well, the doctor knew it, but the referee didn't do anything about it. And so the final 25 seconds of this round will be fought. Amibi was able to get some of the blood cleared out of his eye. And we apparently are going to reach the end of round 11 amid some controversy. From the Market Square Arena in Indianapolis for the WBA Light Heavyweight Championship. We'll return after this word from your local station. What a... Well, as I mentioned, at the end of round 11, we have a raging controversy here in Indianapolis. Referee Luis Rivera was told by everybody, including the WBA president, that what he allowed to happen should not have been allowed to happen. And Murray Sutherland sat here at ringside and told you that uh, Victor Valley had no business on the ring apron when Rivera brought the fighter over to have him examined by the doctor. But Valley, the very crafty trainer that he is, sneaked in, got his fighter cleaned up before the doctor examined him, and everybody from the Marvin Johnson corner from the WBA is screaming bloody murder. No pun intended. <laughs> this is true, yeah. The minute uh, a second... While a round is in progress, if he places one foot on the ring apron, he automatically disqualifies his fighter. There's no ifs, ands, and buts about, buts about it. Doesn't matter what state you're in. So it's incumbent upon the referee to allow that disqualification to happen then? He should have disqualified the Nibi immediately. He did not, and we continue into round 12 of a 15-rounder. And one of the better fights you'll see. Two minutes to go here in the 12th round. John Maria Mebe, the challenger from Cameroon, Africa, in the blue trunks, and Marvin Johnson, WBA light heavyweight championship, champion rather, fighting as if his life depends on it, and maybe in his own mind it does, because he has failed to defend the crown twice before that he won, and this is his third opportunity, and he is trying not to let this one escape as well. I think right now Johnson is fighting on just pure heart. He is so tired. He's pushed this fight right from the middle rounds. He's, he's held the fight for the last five or six rounds. He's got to be fighting on sheer guts and heart. And maybe just scored with a good, short, sharp left hand, which had Johnson reeling for a couple of seconds. And maybe has not stopped throwing leather from the opening bell. He has not backed up once. A couple of his punches forced Marvin Johnson to take steps backward. A minute to go in the 12th round. But Amibi has not retreated one time tonight. And he has taken some real shots. The right eye of Amibi is almost closed, Murray. Very, there must be very little sight coming out of that eye. Which will only land to Johnson's left now. He can land that left whenever he wants. If he's close to him and Amibi's right hand is down, he'll land his left hand. 25 seconds to go in the 12th round. And so you will hear a lot about this fight long after it's over. Johnson just scored with two beautiful right, right hands and a good left cross. A fight that perhaps should have been over by disqualification a round ago was let to con was allowed to continue and should Amibi come back to win this, you'll have a time in this fight. Uh, the uh, ringside physician, Dr. Crutchall, has gone up to examine Jean Marie Amibi, and for the third time, he has allowed him to continue here, Murray. This is the 13th round. Marvin Johnson, the champion in the white trunks, holding on for dear life to a title that he covets and looking for a big payday, but he's got to get through this one. Jean Marie Amibi with an opportunity to become the champion of the world. His first, might I add. Johnson right now is just doing everything right. He's throwing combinations, he's throwing every kind of punch from every conceivable angle you could think about. 
and with Amibi's sight being impaired because of that bad right eye, he's landing the majority of, the majority of them. Murray, I can't help but think, even if Amibi should lose this fight, that he can't help but gain its most valuable experience. Oh, no doubt. He's no going to be a future champion, there is no doubt in my mind, from having seen him for the very first time. He is going to be a tough competitor, doesn't matter who he fights. Two minutes to go in the round. And as I mentioned at the outset of our broadcast, Amibi is no uh, spring chicken. He is 30 years old. He got a very late start in his boxing career and, of course, spent so much time in Africa and in Europe uh, that he didn't really come to the attention of the American fighting public until recently. And maybe it's a little late, but uh, I have a feeling he's got an, an incredible amount of talent and, and, and great will. Right now, Sam, I think the referee has really taken taking a close look. They, there is no way that they can let this... It's over! Through. It is over! Victor Rivera has stepped in, Murray, just as you mentioned. And he has stopped the fight, and Marvin Johnson has successfully defended for the very first time in his life. And when, they are celebrating here in Indianapolis. When you see the referee doing that little shuffle, just about ready to dive in and jump back out, dive back in, he is waiting for the one good punch just to reassure his mind that he's ready to stop that fight. And for five seconds prior to jumping in there, he was thinking about it. And so everyone here at the Market Square Arena is on their feet, and they have waited years and years to see not only Marvin Johnson win a WBA Light Heavyweight Championship, but to successfully defend it. It's been stopped in...